Now, you say the virus is requested. How can we uh, say this virus was requested? Surely nobody would request the AIDS virus. Yet, when you address Bulletin of the World Health Organization, published in 1972, it says specifically the following. An attempt should be made to ascertain whether viruses can in fact exert selective effects on the immune function. By depressing 7S versus 19S antibody, or by affecting T cell as opposed to B cell function. The possibility should be looked into that the immune response to the virus may itself be impaired if the effective viruses damage more or less selectively the cells responding to the viral antigens. Now what does that say? That says, let's make a cell, let's make a virus, sorry, let's make a virus that selectively inhibits the T cell system of man. And of course, what is that virus? That virus is AIDS. So, is it a mere coincidence that we now have a pandemic of a T cell destroying virus, which was in a sense predicted and here requested growing in Africa and the United States? Now, this question was addressed partially in an article written Monday, May 11th, 1987. And in that article, in the front page of the London Times, which addressed the question of, was there an association between the WHO vaccine programs in Africa and the outbreak of AIDS? Their conclusion was the following, that there was an association. What the story goes like this. Supposedly somebody had been hired by the WHO to investigate whether or not the WHO vaccine programs in Africa, the WHO meaning the World Health Organization, which were the WHO vaccine programs which were responsible for eradication of smallpox in Africa, may have been a contributing factor to the spread of AIDS in Africa. Evidently, a researcher who has remained anonymous, is afraid to reveal his name, was hired by the World Health Organization to investigate that study. He did a study over a year or two. He wrote a report. He submitted it to the World Health Organization. The WHO was paid, and that was the end of it. A year or so later, he walks in to the London Times and throws the report on Pierce Wright's desk, who is the science writer at the London Times, and said, if you really want to know what's going on with AIDS in Africa, here's the answer. That article was the impetus for the printing of this story, which said there's a correspondence between the WHO's program in Africa and the outbreak of AIDS. As far as we know, this has never been discussed or addressed in this country. And I find that particularly interesting as to why it's never been addressed in the United States for the following reason. A quote in that, in that article on Monday, May 11th was from Dr. Robert Gallo, who is the reported co-discoverer of the AIDS virus, who said that this was an interesting and important hypothesis. An interesting and important hypothesis. Well, if it's interesting and important, how come nobody's addressing it? Obviously, uh, in a sense, the answer to that might be, if you made AIDS, would you tell anybody? Of course not. Did you read about this World Health Organization's vaccine program and the development of AIDS in your local newspaper? Not likely. The American press virtually ignored this front page story in the prestigious London Times one of Europe's most respected newspapers. The story caused a furor. Front page stories appeared throughout Europe, Latin America, and other parts of the free world. While here in the United States, the story was relegated to obscurity. Why? Why is the American press failing to investigate this controversial story? Why are the American people being denied critical information, which is widely distributed through most of the rest of the world? Dr. Strecker has looked deeper into this mystery surrounding the WHO vaccine program in Africa. And now, he's going to tell you how this AIDS infection could have occurred. Because now, you're going to get the facts. Now, how could this, how could this virus have been, say, inoculated by the WHO in Africa? There are two ways. Obviously, if it was intentional, that is the first way. Intentional? And people say, well, that's absurd. Uh, and I say, no, that's not absurd because of the following reason. Beginning in the early 30s or 40s in this country, in Tuskegee, Alabama, uh, 
there was a study undertaken by the United States Public Health Service which enlisted black men who were infected with syphilis, omega, syphilis, omega syphilis. And those black men were serially followed over many years. The important part of that study was that they were also followed after penicillin became available, and most of them were specifically prevented from being treated with penicillin, which led to the infection of their wives and the development of congenitally infected syphilitic black children uh, in, in the Tuskegee, Alabama experiment. Now that is documented in a book by James Jones, James Jones entitled Bad Blood. For anybody who'd like to review the intentional infliction of disease upon American citizens, you can address yourself to this book, Bad Blood by James Jones. Furthermore, between 1959 and approximately 1970, there were over 300 biological experiments conducted on United States citizens, unknowns to them, such as documented in a book called A Higher Form of Killing by Paxman and Harris, which documents all the biological uh, warfare uh, history of the United States that's known more or less in book form. But to say that, the, that this government or other governments are not capable of doing these kinds of experiments is to not face reality. So obviously if it was intentionally induced, then there could be an, a reason to see the explosion of AIDS in Africa. But more, more, there could be an accidental introduction. And how could that have occurred? It could have occurred in the following manner. If you look at cattle, how was the AIDS virus produced? I mean, how was the smallpox vaccine produced? Smallpox vaccine was produced, according to the report by the WHO, the World Health Organization, in approximately 46 countries, directly from cattle. The belly of a cow would be shaved, it would be sliced open, smallpox vaccine would be dripped on, he would be placed in stanchions so that he couldn't lick his belly. A week or so later, they'd come by, place a stainless steel container underneath it, shave off the scabs, collect the scabs and effluent into the stainless steel container, dry it out, and that's your next smallpox vaccine. Now obviously, any virus contaminating the cow, such as bovine visna virus, bovine leukemia virus, bovine syncytial virus, could be a potential contaminant of that smallpox preparation. In 1981, Cedric Mims, writing in Microbiological Reviews, stated that a alleged bovine visna virus was a known contaminant of fetal calf serum. Now what does that mean? That means that in 1981, at the same time that the AIDS virus was discovered, that they identified a virus named bovine visna, which was contaminating fetal calf serum of cows. That means that this virus was present not only in cows, but was present in the growth media that was being used on tissue cultures worldwide. It means that fetal calf serum, which is like the growth hormone for human and other animal tissue cultures, was contaminated with a virus which we know may have some if not a direct identicality to AIDS.